welcome back to another episode of Realms Unveiled, where history, ancestral legacies, and spiritual quests intersect to reveal the complexities of the human experience. I'm your host, the Ancient Elder, and today we explore two tales, one that's as intricate as it is revealing. Sit back and listen as the past reverberates through the lives of the present in a most unusual way. Elder Mona sat on her porch, rocking gently back and forth as she sipped her herbal tea. Across from her sat Keisha, her grandniece, eagerly waiting to hear another tale from the family's storied past. Have you ever heard of a of a man named Jay, Mary, and Sim? Elder Mona began. I hate a so-called father of gynecology, Keisha replied, her tone tinged with skepticism. Well, now that what they call him, but what they don't often tell you is the suffering he inflicted on enslaved women in the name of medical progress. Our ancestor was one of those women, Keisha. Keisha clenched her fists. That's just outrageous. That don't make no sense. Now let's flash back a few years ago where two medical students, Alex Sims and Marcus Johnson, both found themselves working on the same project. Marcus had always felt a strange vibe around Alex but couldn't put his finger on it until the day Alex boldly announced in class. Yeah, dude, so my six-time great-granddad was the J. Marion Sims. Marcus froze. Because that name, like a gong in his memory, echoed through the stories his family had passed down through generations. It was time to act. So Marcus approached a group of like-minded students. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, y'all see that dude over there? That Sims boy? I got a proposition for y'all. A little educational experience that uh, little Alex will never forget. So unbeknownst to Alex, Marcus and his friends carefully orchestrated a setup. They invited Alex to a study session in an isolated lab deep within the bowels of the medical school. Once there, they exposed him to a range of ethical dilemmas, meticulously simulated situations intended to evoke the harrowing experiences that Marcus's ancestors had undergone. So, so you see, Marcus, he wanted to give Alex a taste of his own ancestral medicine, you could say, Elder Mona explained. What, what, Anne? Keisha pressed, leaning forward in her seat. Alex broke down and reconsidered his family legacy and, and started advocating for ethical practices in medicine, Elder Mona said. As for Marcus, he continued his studies focusing on medical ethics and social justice. That's why a lot of us are hesitant to trust doctors, huh? Elder Mona chuckled. <laughs> exactly, child. The past ain't ain't just the past. It's a mirror reflected into our present, but it also serves as a lesson teaching us what paths to tread or avoid in the future. Both women laughed, their laughter echoing into the night, carrying with it a sense of complex vindication. I hope you enjoyed that tale. Now, here's a tale that seeks to explore the intersections between faith, healing, and mystery. See, Karen had always lived by the book, prayers before meals, church every Sunday, and an unwavering belief that modern medicine was in sync with the will of the divine. When she was diagnosed with stage four cancer and given a mere two months to live, her world shattered. Prayers and chemotherapy commenced, but the prognosis remained grim. Her faith was steadfast, but wavered at the edges and eaten away by the cancer that just wouldn't budge. One day, her close friend Rachel hesitated before speaking. I heard about this healer in town. Someone who uses, you know, unconventional methods like herbs and crystals and all that stuff and I, 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 I already know I already know Karen was skeptical 
I don't know, Rage. That sounds too much like walking off the path of the Lord. You know, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. I know, but what if it's a path that leads to another form of His miracles? Rachel attempted to reason. I just don't know, Rage. Let me, let me think on it. After wrestling with her convictions for a while, Karen found herself standing in front of a hut that felt out of place in the concrete jungle of the city. Edible foliage and aromatic herbs filled the air with a scent so lush it, it felt like she had stepped into Eden itself. Inside, the air was thick with the aroma of incense and the soft hum of crystal bowls reverberated through the room. A woman, neither young nor old, greeted her. I've been waiting for you, Karen. Nice to meet you. For two hours, Karen laid on that table, crystals aligned along her chakras, herbs burning at her feet, and the healing bowls chiming in perfect resonance. She felt strange, like waves were passing through her body, rearranging the cells and cleansing her very soul. Upon leaving, she felt an urgent need to urinate, and to her horror, it was dark brown. Panic, she went straight to her doctor's office. We'll need to run some tests immediately, the doctor said after hearing Karen's story. The results came back, and all eyes widened in disbelief as the evidence, it was irrefutable. There was no trace of cancer anywhere. Karen broke down, tears it, just streaming from her face uncontrollably. It was, it was joy, tears of joy. Could it be? Was it her? The doctor muttered that, looking at the results as if they changed. This is absolutely astounding. Riding on a wave of newfound life, Karen rushed straight back to the hut to thank the healer, only to find an old, dilapidated garage standing in its place. No hut. No herbs. Like it had been swallowed by the earth. Like it was never really there. What happened? So there you have it, listeners. Was the healer a celestial being intervening at the point where human faith and desperation collide? Or did Karen's mind, powered by the looming dread of a finite timeline, spur her body into self-healing? The questions remain. But one thing certain, the boundaries between the spiritual, the mystical, and the scientific are not as rigid as we might think. And, in your opinion, did Alex get what he deserved? Thank you for joining us on another profound episode. Until next time, stay mystical.